Welcome to the sixth installment in my amateur attempt to reconstruct the crash of November 7-2 Echo X-ray. I have now incorporated new air traffic control audio from the FAA that I obtained through a Freedom of Information Act request, and I have time aligned it to the reconstruction. This reconstruction starts about four minutes before my other installments and about four miles northwest of the Van Nuys Airport, as you can see on this map. The ATC audio is from the woodland radar position of the Southern California TRACOD, commonly called SoCal, on frequency 134.2. SoCal helicopter, 72 Echo X-ray with your transitioning in VFR condition at 1,500 Camarillo. Helicopter 72 Echo X-ray SoCal approach, Roger, and you just going to stay down low at that for all the way to Camarillo? Yes, sir, low altitude, 2 Echo X-ray. No, two echo extra, Roger. Uh, I'm gonna lose ra radar and uh, comms with you probably pretty shortly. So you're gonna squawk VFR, and uh, when you get closer, go to Camarillo Tower. Okay, guys, we'll squawk VFR two echo. To squawk VFR, the pilot presses the VFR button on the helicopter transponder radio, which in this case is a Garmin model GTX 335. This causes the transponder to change its squawk code and identification number to 1200, and I can see the squawk code change from 235 to 1200 in the ASB messages sent from the aircraft. The 1200 squawk code indicates to ATC that the aircraft is flying under Visual Flight Rules, or VFR, and is not requesting ATC radar services. For those not familiar, ASB messages are sent by aircraft to report their position and other flight parameters. To collect the ADS-B messages, aviation enthusiasts have installed antennas and receivers around the world and they forward the collected messages to organizations such as Flight Radar 24, ADS-B Exchange, and the Open Sky Network. I merged data from all three for this reconstruction. Unfortunately, the timestamps associated with many of these messages are not accurate, and thus the events in this reconstruction are only accurate to about plus or minus one and a half seconds. I am now fast forwarding to time 1743.12 so that we can hear the end of the ATC controller shift change. Descending via and cleared, not talking to yet here. That's what I got. Got it. Go. Another controller is now operating the woodland radar position, and the remaining communications between the pilot and air traffic control is with this controller. For clarity, I will mute the communications between the controller and other aircraft he is handling. We are now passing the location where I started my previous reconstructions at 1743.33, and I am now changing the display so that the lower window shows us the view on a clear day so that we can orient ourselves while in the clouds. I am also adding in some instruments in the middle of the display that are like those the pilot would use aboard the aircraft. I am using a software program called TACTVIEW to generate the gauges and display data. This readout and gauge show the rate that the helicopter is going up and down in feet per minute and this readout and gauge show the true airspeed in knots. The attitude indicator, sometimes called artificial horizon, is used by the pilot to see how the helicopter is oriented with respect to the ground. As you can see here in this turn, the line from the indicator remains parallel to the horizon line below. Getting the marine layer, a kind of cloud and fog to look as I imagine, is extremely challenging using the stock X-Plane 11 simulator, and I was not entirely successful. That said, I believe the helicopter is now nearly surrounded by fog. The helicopter begins to climb at 1744.30. So, Cal 4 helicopter, 2 Echo X3, we're going to go ahead and start our climb to go above the uh, layer, and uh, we can stay with you. 2 Echo X ray, uh, where are you? Uh, just west of Van Nuys, 2 Echo X ray. 2 Echo, Echo X ray, ident. The pilot pushes the IDENT button on the transponder, which causes the transponder to transmit an identification message to the traffic controller. Two Echo X-ray, yeah, you're uh, still on a 1200 code. Uh, are you requesting flight following? Yes, sir, two Echo The controller spends the next few seconds talking to other pilots. Meanwhile, for reasons not yet known, the helicopter begins a left turn and starts descending. I'm still wondering if the pilot is distracted by something happening in or to the aircraft, that has diverted his attention away from the primary flight instruments. And two Echo X-ray, what do you say intentions? Uh, we're climbing to 4,000 two Echo X-ray. The pilot just told ATC that he intends to climb to 4,000 feet, but we can see that the helicopter is in fact descending at over 2,000 feet per minute and is in a left bank. I believe the pilot is spatially disoriented and does not really understand the orientation of the helicopter. I will add that, to me, the pilot did not sound distressed, which makes it unlikely he was aware of any significant equipment malfunction or that he was experiencing a medical emergency. And then what are you going to do when you get to altitude? 
The pilot does not respond. My reconstruction of the last portion of the flight is an educated guess because I have no more ad speed data from any provider, and I had to estimate it from flight path pictures released by the NTSB. The FAA did not record any further transmissions from the helicopter, and the controller attempts to contact the pilot two more times at 1746.02 and 1746.26. Two Echo X-ray, you're uh, still too low level uh, for uh, flight following at this time. Two Echo X-ray, SoCal. That is the end of all ATC communications involving November 2 Echo X-ray. I believe this amateur reconstruction is consistent with the hypothesis that the crash was due in part to the pilot being spatially disoriented while in the clouds. As I've said before, I will be interested to see how close my reconstructions match the NTSB and whether there are other factors such as mechanical failure of which we are not currently aware. I'm thankful to my friend Brad Worsham for all the time he spent helping me understand what might have happened and giving me feedback on my analysis.